Yeah, right now, it takes me ages to find music that's legal to use. Like everything is copyrighted. And when you search for music that's not copyrighted, um, it's hard to find songs that are related to those songs that are also not copyrighted. So um, I want to try and find a way to automate this process. Like what if I could train a system that knows what I like and then automatically goes out and finds the stuff for me. And then when I want to make a new video, it automatically spits out three to five songs and all the licensing info and the metadata and everything. And I can just use it in my video without having to search for it. That'd be That'll be insane. I wanna see the light. So in order to have a machine that can be trained, it first has to be able to perform the basic tasks. Like I need to give it a song request and then it needs to go and find the song. So it needs to be able to, to discover the song, go and find it, find a way to download it, um, get the actual binary, store it in a data store. And then we need to find out how can we get the metadata and all the licensing info, which is very important, because then we can use that to filter out and build a little inventory of music that is licensed to use. So the first thing I think we need a data store that's good at storing binary. I wanna see the So it turns out I'm going to need a binary store and I've been searching around for something that's really good at storing binary and I came across this. This is probably some of the best documentation I've ever seen. We can build like a single node database, a cluster of them. Um, it has great like replication technology. I've been having a look at how it replicates, which is really, really cool. Um, it has some of the best documentation in terms of like installation. Take a look at how to install it. There's like all these different methods of how to install and we can look at this docker option they tell you how to run the image the port to expose where to put the data um, yeah and then you go to the setup steps and there's a single node setup so we can just run one they have this whole like relax protocol so there's only one word to describe couchdb and it's relax So we have our storage. Have a look at this Docker Compose file. I just uh, put a container name. I refer to the Apache CouchDB uh, Docker image. It's running on this port and we give it a username and password. And I also want to mount the storage to disk. So this is where it's gonna persist all the database stuff. Um, really, really, really easy. I say Docker Compose up. It's up and running. See, there's a whole bunch of things and we can relax. The other thing I wanted to show you is there's a typical document store. You can just create documents and they're all JSON files. So we'll be storing our metadata about the, the info into the document and then have an attachment for the binary. And I was reading an article about the replication of this and folks are replicating files like up to 10 gigabytes with ease. So this is gonna be really good technology for us to use for binary storage. Now that we have our storage, I was thinking, okay, how do we get music into the system? I decided to make this drawing to show you guys what I'm thinking. And this is kind of this, like the user, this is myself. And I basically make an API call to my system to with some music URL. This could be any music platform uh, URL or link. And I send this to my music request API. Now I know how to make a web API, so this should be pretty simple. Um, I'm thinking because we make a call, we might do like 50 songs request, or we might do like a bulk request where we just want to throw in a bunch of songs. I don't want to sit and have all these web requests hanging. So the best technology for this kind of thing is a message queue. So I want to create a message queue that'll handle the request. So the API has a very simple job of receiving song requests and putting it into queue. We then have these music consumers that basically look after the queue. And the reason why I have so many of them is because this allows us to do batch processing. So let's say I drop 500 items into the queue. 
you don't want one thing to um, job to become really busy trying to process 500 uh, song requests so what this architecture allows you to do is you can scale out the the music consumers automatically and depending on how many items are in the queue they can each process a batch of them and then we're gonna figure out how do we download music from you know the relevant platform okay guys so now that we figured out um, our drawing and our what we want to build um, I think the next step is we want to go and build this music request queue over here and then we can go and build the API and try and populate the queue so what is RabbitMQ? RabbitMQ is the most widely deployed open source message broker. Oh, I gotta love documentation like this. It's got a Docker image. Woo! So we can spin it up with ease. And uh, configuration, directory locations, tells you everything you need. It's also written in Erlang. Wow. I've never even heard of this language. Erlang programming language. The term Erlang is used interchangeably with Erlang OTP, which consists of Erlang runtime system, number of ready-to-use components, mainly written in Erlang. Back to our Docker Compose, I've now added our music queue. You can see I'm running the RabbitMQ management image. Um, I'm exposing that port, giving it a username and a password as well. So easy. If I do Docker Compose up, whoo, we have a queue. RabbitMQ all set up, ready to go. This is what I quite like about this is so much insights. You can see, this is where our queue would populate. And then we would create a channel and you see all the connections coming in here and then um, all the clients that are connected the consumers that connect to it the messages we can view from here uh, this is pretty cool now that we have our queue up uh, the next step for us is to start populating that queue so i had a look there is a go client so we're going to start writing some go code <laughs> I'm going to need a config file so when we configure this queue we might need to like this API might need to be configured to know where is the queue so we're going to need to create some kind of a, a model um, and I'm thinking to use a configuration file My heart stopped when I first saw you My world stopped spinning okay, so this will allow us to connect or to configure our request API to know where is the queue. So we can take in like host, port, username and password and then send that to the RabbitMQ SDK. We also have to create another model here that holds our message. So I'm thinking just the song URL will do for now. Um, when you search a music platform, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever it is, you have a URL, right? That says this is a song. So we're gonna, the message that we send to the queue will have the song URL for now. Okay, this bit of code here will read our configuration. So it's gonna look for that config file and we'll read it up and send it back as an object. All right, so here's my little web server. So we use that method, we get our config. We start up a router, we take and submit query as our path. So we can submit requests to this API endpoint and it'll go and do this function which says submit request and it passes all the bits into there so we can handle it.
a request API should now be running. Okay, so I made a request. Finally, I got a 200 status OK. So it seems like our API has received it. Looking at the logs here, it's submitting request to queue. So our producer has succeeded. So if we go over here, queues, we refresh this, we see the music queue. We go in and we can see the message. So we can see a publish event occurred. There's a ready event, total one. So get messages. There is our message, boys. Song URI, it's right there. So now a message has been published into the queue. So I can technically keep pumping um, URLs and song requests into this queue. Spam this a couple of times. Now see, we actually got uh, like seven messages in the queue. Interesting. Okay, let's say if I say seven here, we can now see all the messages. So this is the idea with this thing. I want to be able to just push messages into the queue. And now we need to go ahead and build a consumer that'll pick up these messages and goes and does the downloads. I'm having a ton of fun in this um, on this video, making this on this project series. Now the last piece of the puzzle, we have to figure out how do we download all the the music. How's the system that the Q consumer gonna gonna figure out how to download the stuff? Next episode, we're gonna continue that. I think it's a bit much um, for one video. I originally planned it out to be like a two-part series where we finish all this in one, and then the next one we do some of the data searching and filtering, and we maybe build up a little interface to show you know this is all the music and we can start ranking ranking them and things like that but it looks like this might be a trilogy so um, stay tuned subscribe and in the next video we'll continue building out that consumer